Hello my class 9 students. This video will help you to remove all the confusion you have about questions on time period simple pendulum. Because I am going to tell you a simple trick related to simple pendulum. Most of you have learned about the simple pendulum in your chapter 1 of physics syllabus. Now what does the simple pendulum look like? It has the rigid surface and it has a thin string with a heavy bob suspended from this hook, right? So what is the formula for time period? Time period formula, T stands for time period, is 2 pi under root L upon G. You must know this formula by heart. Now let us understand the trick. In this formula, Remember, 2 and pi, they are the constants. What does it mean by constants? The constants means the value is never going to change. 2 is going to remain 2, pi is going to remain pi. And what are the variables? The variables are t, l and g. Time period will depend upon the length, that is the effective length of the simple pendulum. And it will depend upon the gravitational acceleration. So, you see that time not just depends upon the length, but it is dependent upon the root of length. And because length is in the numerator, it will be directly proportional. And it also depends upon g, but not just t, but under root g. And where is that g? In the denominator. So, it is going to be under root 1 upon g or you can write it as t proportional to 1 upon root of g. Once you know this part and this part, let us see how we are able to tackle the questions on time period. Now, if the question asks you, how does the time period of a pendulum change if the effective length of it becomes 25 times the original? So, we have the quantities involved here. We have time period. We have effective length. So what is our formula? We write the formula first. What is our formula? Come on. T is equal to 2 pi under root L upon G. Right? Now time period, how does it change? They are asking. And the effective length means they are talking about this length. Are they talking about G? No, that means G is constant. What is this g? g is constant. It is not going to change. Alright. So we are going to say time period and length. How are they changing? Of course 2 pi is constant. So time is directly proportional to under root of the effective length. So we will then conclude t1 upon t2 will be equal to under root l1 upon l2. Got it? Write in the comment yes if you understood this. Alright. Now let us substitute. Our time period t1 upon t2 will become therefore under root if we say original length as l then the new length has become 25 times the original means it is 25 times l. l, l gets cancelled which is equal to under root 1 upon 25 and that will be equal to 1 upon 5. What is 1 upon 5? t1 upon t2 and so you will cross multiply to get t2 equal to this will multiply here and we will have 5 t1. Got that? And so we will say that the time period becomes 5 times the original and that is our answer. Got that? Send a thumbs up if you did. Secondly, if your question asks how does the time period of a pendulum change if the pendulum is taken to a planet which has one fourth of Earth's gravitational acceleration. So if we take gravitational acceleration for the earth as g, 
the planet will have g as one fourth of it that means g upon four it will be okay so let us look at the formula once again what is the formula speak it with me 2 pi under root l upon g okay now what are they saying that the pendulum is taken to the planet which means the length is not changing of that pendulum right and also 2 pi is not changing for the pendulum right so the time period is going to be proportional to 1 upon root of g or you can even say that time period is proportional to root of 1 upon g however way you look at it no problem but now we will have t1 and we will have t2 so t1 upon t2 is going to become 1 upon root of g1 upon root of 1 upon g2 and that is going to become root of g2 upon g1 so our gravity is becoming one fourth of the earth's gravity this is g1 which is earth's gravity therefore it is under root one fourth of g divided by this g so we write like so and that becomes under root one upon four which is one upon two what is one upon two t1 upon t2 okay so you cross multiply you will get the value of t2 how much is t2 cross multiply here it is twice t1 so we'll say therefore time period becomes tell me twice the original and that is our answer got it if you did write yes again in the comments okay thank you for watching and all the best